In today's virtual classroom environment, it is frustrating trying to use your phone as a zoom camera and then use your laptop or your desktop computer which doesn't have a zoom camera and run your PowerPoint from there and hold your phone at the same time. Only if there was something that would make this a little bit easier. I think I found it. Welcome to the Warrior Woodshop. On this video, we're gonna make this awesome phone or tablet stand so that way during Zoom meetings and virtual learning, you have your hands free to use your phone, use your computer, take notes, do whatever you need to do. So let's look at this project and get started. I'd like to thank the WWGOA for the inspiration in this project. We're gonna use this as a first year project so they can learn how to do dados and rabbits. So we had to modify the design just slightly, make it a little bit bigger and fit the tools that we had. What's cool about this is it can be, it's got a charging slot if you want it. If your phone or tablet has a charging slot on the bottom, you can leave a small gap. And then it's got a couple of dados on the back so you can set it up in a standing position or you can set it in a reclined or laying down position depending on your preference. So let's get this thing started. The first thing we need to do is get our blank, which the final is five by nine. So we want to find a blank that's at least five and a half, preferably six inches wide. And between nine and four inches for the leg, we want to be 13. So rough cut, we're going to be 15 or 16 inches long for our initial milling operation. Now you don't have to be simple or plain. You can take and make your own blank. This would add just a little bit of design element, especially if you made the little slots on each side. Just remember with the racing stripe to make each side equal if that's what you prefer, because we're gonna cut it down to five inches in the final. So now that we got our blanks, let's head over to the milling machines and get started. All right, one well, of the first things we need to do, just like I said over there at the workbench, is we need to get our blank ready. And I happened to find a piece that is six and a half inches wide. Still got sawmill marks on both edges, so we'll take care of that in a minute. And we're gonna cut it down to between 15 and 16 inches, and it's a rough measurement, so we don't need to worry about using a square or any serious layout tool. So let me cut this to length, then we'll head over to the planer. All right, one of the first steps, or second step in processing a board is to get it down to thickness. We did the first step, rough cutting it to length. Now we're gonna planer it to three quarters thick. And remember, this one's pretty important because our data slot matches our gauge block. So you wanna be at three quarters, pretty much on the dot, just so it fits in there snug. If you wanna do the striped option, follow all the procedures we did in the cutting board video and do all those steps and then planer down to three quarters to do your cutting board design. Otherwise, let's get started. Zero the planer. Half a turn, repeat until we meet three quarters. Make sure you don't forget to flip. That's one side through. We're gonna do a half a turn clockwise. Flip it over. We're just going to repeat that until we get down to our three quarters. There we are, fits like a glove. Once you get close, you may only want to do a quarter turn, but you want that to fit nice and snug so the leg will fit in as you're using it. All right, if you remember, we got two sawmilled edges, so we need to take care of one of them. You don't need to, to do both. Remember, that is uh, going to get cut off the table saw in a little bit. so. Just worry about one edge for right now. Almost there, we're going to do a second pass. That looks good. Now that we have our straight edge, we're going to head over to the table saw. 
All right, here we are at the table saw. Remember in the Warrior Wood Shop, you need to have a table saw setup check. This is done after you go through the setup. So let's quickly review. First thing we want to do is set our blade height. And that is one tooth above the work. We're going to set our fence. And I'm actually going to go to five and a quarter. I know the final says five, but we're going to make this a quarter inch bigger because sometimes when you're cutting the dado, it tends to chip out. So we'll have that that little extra to cut off later when we're doing the final outcome. All right, once you got your table saw check, lower the guard, make sure the jointed edge is against the fence, make sure the table's locked, setup check should have remembered all that. No push stick on this one. Now with the remainder, we want to, we're gonna have to do this one, no guard. We're gonna set this to between three quarters and one inch. And we're going to rip another strip. This will be for the little bit of a ledge. If you're uncomfortable doing this, you can find some scrap and do this cut on the bandsaw. So ask your instructor if you're uncomfortable doing a narrow cut like this. I know there's plenty of extra here. What this does is just keep it safer to cut a strip like that. So. All right, so now we got everything table sawed to width, joiner, planer, and all those steps in the process in order. Before we can do any layout at the workbench, we need to make sure we square up an end. And this can be done on the miter saw or the radial. Let's head over to the workbench and do our layout. This is going to be our basically base and stand. One of the biggest things you need to remember about for safety on this project is you do all the miter cuts and you do all the dado cuts with it being at least a 12 inch long piece. Once that is chopped in less than 12 inches, all bets are off and you got to do it separate ways and in the Warrior Wood Shop, it's a no go. You're going to be starting over from this point. This little Holder block here, it can even be an offset color. So be creative with this. Use up some of the scrap wood. It's what these projects are for. All right, referring to your drawing, measuring from one end doesn't matter. Our low point is two, and we're going to put a mark at two and three quarters. So that marks out where the lower one would go. The height of the upper one is at eight. So we'll go back three quarters. There is our reclining one. And then the total length is nine. And then from there, our stand is four inches. So we're going to go ahead and put a mark at 13. Then we're going to use a square. Make sure it's tied up against the edge. You're not just freehanding this with a ruler. You want these to be pretty accurate. I'll put a big X there for scrap and a couple extra X's there so that way we know that these are our dados and then if you remember it's going to be difficult to see on the edge when this gets flipped over so I'm going to take some time and square these across. Alright we're back at day number two on this project and this is where your markings are going to come in handy because you got to remember what you did the, the day before. Everything's marked out ready to go. So we're at what we, we're at what we call our cross cut dado sled. This one rides on two tracks. We've got a dado blade set up inside the table saw. And we're going to position this stop block and line it up with our marks. But the first thing we need to do is get our blade height set. Don't assume that just because the last student was supposed to have it set right, that it's set right for you. So you definitely want to double check that. In this case, we're good. Second thing you want to do is get this position it all the way up against the blade. Everything's off at this point. And match up the sides of the data blade with the sides of the mark. If you remember, that's why we transferred the marks over to the side is because once you lay the dados down or the dado marks down, it's hard to see them on the edge. So all you got to do is reposition this stop lock, line it up with the marks, and you're good to go. At that point, you'll go ahead and make your first cut. All 
All right, now that you got your first dado cut, all you gotta do is reposition the stop lock and make the second dado cut. Just repeat the procedure. All right, as mentioned, sometimes with the dado blade, you get a little bit of chip out on the back side. The way we're gonna fix this is go ahead, remember we made this five and a quarter in the beginning. We're gonna reset our fence to five inches now and go ahead and cut that chipped out edge off and everything's gonna look like it was shipped from the beginning. All right, now we're back to the miter saw this time. We left this long because it made it a little bit easier to handle on the uh, table saw sled. You definitely don't want to cut this apart before you do all the data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off our excess. Now that I've cut off the excess and we got a 13 inch piece now, we're actually gonna do a couple of 45 degree bevels. This will give it that ability to set a little bit of an angle, have more of a foot. We wanna make sure that the dados are facing the fence. That way you can hold with your left and the saw is turned to the right. And what we wanna do is cut off only about halfway through. We don't want a sharp point. Remember to leave the fence down or the blade down it's all kinds of complete stops, so this little triangle cut off doesn't come flying back up at you. Now you want to flip the piece over. You could slide it and cut it left-handed and change the angle, but I find it easier just to flip it over like this. That way the cut's the same, and you're going to repeat the procedure on the other side. All right, we're back here at the workbench. You can see how this is starting to come together to match up with our prototype. We're going to router round over all the edges with the router on the top. We're also going to take our scrap and round those over too for our ledge. This process needs to be done at a router table, not with a handheld router because the tracing wheel will fall into the dados or catch on the beveled edges. Now we're going to repeat the procedure with our scrap piece. If you're not comfortable routering this small of a piece, you can use a block and some sandpaper and just soften the edges that way. All right, we're back here at the workbench. We've got our ledge rounded over and we've got our base plate, our backer board all rounded over. This is a little bit too small to be handled at the router table, so we're just going to ease the edges with sandpaper. Don't do too much on the square edge so it fits into the dado nice and snug. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to round the edges over with the belt disc sander, and we're going to learn how to use some small scrap. We're going to make each one of these blocks two inches long, so it allows a quarter inch on each side for the round over and we're going to leave about approximately a half inch gap in the middle for the charger cord. If we can avoid having to deal with a small dangerous piece more than necessary, let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to round over both ends while it's still along the stick. Feed it on the other side. So next we're going to go over the miter saw and we're going to cut two inches off of each end and we're going to come right back here to the, to the belt sander and I'll show you how to handle a small piece that violates the margin of safety when you're using a belt disc sander. What we're going to do is pull out one of our wooden parallel clamps and go ahead and use that as a jig to hold it and our hands can stay out of the margin of safety. All right, now that we've got our base blocks made, backboard or, or tablets stand, and the leg made, the next thing to do is move on to the favorite part of any project, sanding. Basically, you're trying to just soften up all the corners, get rid of all your pencil marks, and make everything ready for finish. We need to put on our stop blocks at the bottom. And we're just going to simply use wood glue and some spring clamps. You could use the super glue, but I like the, since it's the face 
I don't want any of that mess showing on the front that won't, the, the stain will get affected. So we're just going to put a little bit of glue on the base of each one. And it's a face to face glue joint, so glue alone is enough. Alright, so we're going to put them about an inch above the bottom, maybe three quarters. You know your charger plug, so you can position them wherever you want. And then we're going to use the spring clamps to give it about an hour or two of dry time. There we go. Alright, we're going to let that set for a couple hours. Make sure all the glue's cleaned up. Other options, hot glue, CA glue. I don't know if I'd nail them because it might split out being such a small piece. But that's how you keep it. And a, your charger cord is on the side. That can be one solid piece. So design it for your phone. This is kind of a standard design. Everything looks good. We'll come back at the finishing phase. All right, we're back from the finishing room. We put a satin polyurethane on it. You could stain it before you do that. We just want to use the polyurethane finish or a paste wax. That way it stands up the durability of both phone, tablet, and as you can see here, even laptop use. So as you can tell, we're finishing up the video using our phone tablet stand in the standing position. If you're a student in the Warrior Woodshop, make sure you grab your plans, go find some material, and it's time to get started. For those of you out in YouTube land, if you like this video, one, thanks for watching, but two, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications when we have other small projects like this, and even some larger furniture based and even trailer projects we're going to be posting soon on our channel. So again, thanks for watching. Now for everybody out there, go out and make some sawdust.